To outdoor adventures. I'm frozen and uh, it is July 31st and it's July 31st on a full moon. And not just any full moon, it's actually known as a blue moon. A blue moon doesn't have anything to do with the color of the moon like a blood moon does. Um, a blue moon just has to deal with the fact that there is basically two full moons in one given month. So we had a full moon at the beginning of July and now we have another full moon on this day July 31st so I thought it'd be kind of fun to go out on a something different I'm gonna do a just a six mile night hike haven't done a night hike in forever I'm up here at Raccoon Creek State Park and tonight's gonna be a lot of fun this guys is the through night TN 12 a vendor just sent me this, and we're going to put it through its rounds tonight, I guarantee it. This uh, flashlight has four modes, and it goes up to 1,050 lumens. That's really bright. So if you give you guys an idea of how bright that is, that's how bright that is. <laughs> One of the things that I really enjoy about night hiking is it's incredibly peaceful and it's definitely a change of scenery um, you know from doing the day hike you won't find a lot of people out night hiking um, and if you do they're usually some of the nicest people you could ever meet so there's no need to be afraid of them uh, they just are experiencing nature at night just like you are experiencing nature during your day hikes so this trail actually, I'm going, I'm a little out of breath right now because I'm going up a hill. But this trail actually goes down to Raccoon Creek Lake. And uh, once we're there, we'll probably stop for a little bit and uh, we'll answer your Facebook questions when we get there. This is magnificent. It's pitch black. It's probably right around 10 o'clock right now. And it is absolutely amazing weather for this. It's really cool. Guys, if you want to get into night hiking, I suggest you find a loop that you are very familiar with during the day and just start there. Don't try to go, you know, 12, 15 miles your first time. Go like a mile. See how it feels for you and add miles onto it after that. You want to make sure you know where you're going because everything looks different in the dark. Just keep that in mind. This is so cool out here. Also, some people, when they're first starting, they get creeped out by certain sounds. Because a squirrel at night rustling some leaves will sound like a 300-pound bear in the woods. And, you know, that can be a little frightening for some people if you, if you aren't used to what, that, what a squirrel actually sounds like. And I'm not talking just a squirrel. I mean, anything. Deer. What used to freak me out is our animal eyes at night because, you know, they have that reflective uh, coating so to help them see in the dark, like cat eyes. And that always used to freak me out. But, you know, as I got more and more used to things, you know, I realized, you know, they're just out here with me. So not a big deal. And here comes a car, so I'm going to hide a second here. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty funny. Uh, actually, the car that pulled up, it was, uh, I thought it was a cop at first, but it was actually a park ranger. And uh, they were just making sure I was okay and not lost or anything. So They actually care around here at Raccoon, so i gotta got to give them props for that. So anyway, guys, like I was saying, um, animal eyes used to freak me out because of their reflective coating on their eyes. 
and you know once I got past that once I realized you know they're out here during the day they're out here at night and there's nothing to be scared of you know everything you see during the daytime that they're out at night too you know they're just here with you so you just got to realize that you have to take the sounds as they come and you just have to you know chill out and relax the crickets are chirping and it's really really neat I'm looking forward to a couple sections around here um, namely uh, the pine tree area uh, which is one of my favorite parts about the park it looks like they had planted these pine trees hundreds of years ago they're all in a line they they're all like evenly spaced out it's really really cool we're gonna bust through here the trail is pretty overgrown lots of spider webs but that's okay we can do this trail keep going sorry guys I think I finally got the lighting fixed so you can probably see me now um, I just checked the footage and it was not good as far as um, you being able to actually see me and where I'm going here so hopefully it's a little better for you guys I do apologize um, I've only filmed one other night hike so the lighting techniques are all new to me here um, so this flashlight is working out fantastic um, I completely turned the headlamp off and I, I kinda wish that my headlamp was in the 900 lumen range forget what it is but the batteries are fresh and it's just not even coming close to the output of this light um, the only thing I'm downside I'm noticing about this light so far is I've had it on the entire time we've probably been hiking for 20 30 minutes now and um, it's just getting a little bit hot on the second to the highest setting so is that a bad thing no but at the highest setting I think it would get really really freaking hot Anyway guys, I'd like to share something scary that happened on our Cranberry Lake 50 trip. We were camping the first night along that stream. And he woke me up saying he heard animal noises walking back and forth between our two shelters. He was in a tent and I was in a hammock. So after a couple times of him saying he's hearing animals, I decided I don't know, we should probably go take a look if they're if they're that continuous. Maybe it's something big that we need to scare out of there. So we get up and we notice that there is a campfire or something, some kind of bright light up on the top of the hill that we're see we're camped in a valley and it's up on this campsite or whatever this is campfire is on top of the hill. So we're like, huh? So we get in closer to see. To investigate we realize it's not a campfire at all it's a bright white light we're not sure what the heck it possibly is so we go head back to the trail which is not even 20 feet away okay and we look up at this thing and we shine a flashlight trying to get a better look at it in fact we shine this we shine this flashlight up the trail and we can't see we can't make out exactly what this thing is I'm starting to think that maybe it's just somebody night hiking. And then we turn the lights off. And here this thing, whatever it is, starts moving back and forth. Like it's kind of walking like this. And I started to get a little creeped out. Still isn't still am not sure what this thing is. We shine our my I shine my flashlight and my headlamp on this light and it stops moving. So I'm thinking, okay, this is definitely a person, so we call out to it. No answer whatsoever. Really getting creeped out now. Turn the lights back off. Starts moving again. At this point, Gary's like, let me go back and put my contacts in just in case, you know, somebody's starting trouble. You know, we need to, you know, 
yell at this thing, yell at this person walking down the trail, whatever we need to do, however we need to handle the situation. Go ahead and get his contacts back in. And we go back in the trail. We start heading up the trail. This thing's still coming for us with the lights off. We finally realized, <laughs> as we got closer, that this was the moon. The moonlight was casting down the trail so bright because we were so far away from any kind of city uh, light pollution that it was just shining right at us, like a, like a headlamp, like that. And it was just absolutely crazy. And the reason why when the lights were off that we thought it was moving was because there was a small amount of wind blowing the branches from side to side. So that was my uh, creepiest experience I've ever had in the dark out camping. Other than seeing like animal eyes, like deer eyes staring back at me. But hey guys, I, I want to hear your stories. Did you have any other creepy stories like that? I'd love to hear them. Post them in the comments. Or message me on Facebook or something. I think that's pretty cool. Especially when it turns out to be nothing. This has got to be the coolest part of a raccoon in the dark. It's just a column of trees. It's really, really neat. Alright, so we've been on the trail for about an hour now. Um, I expect this to probably take me about two and a half hours to hike the six miles. So like I said, in the dark everything takes just a little bit longer. I think we are at the junction for the ski trail and the heritage trail where we go down. Should be a little bench up here. And we'll go down to the lake. And we'll pretty soon we'll be back at the road near the lake. It's going to be really neat. Hopefully we can actually see the full moon, just kind of enclosed in all these trees right now. I think we're just about at the intersection. Let's see. Boat trailer parking. I forget which way it is now. Let's look at the map real quick. We started here at the parking lot. Came down here. Went on Heritage. And yeah, okay, so we take the boat trailer parking. All right, good stuff. Alrighty, so this trail should take us up to the lake, and then I will answer your Facebook questions. Which, guys, I really enjoy hearing from you guys. I, I love the interaction that we're having. I love helping you guys out where I can. You guys help me out all the time. Just interacting with you guys has been a pleasure since this channel started. Alright. Should be it. All right, C7. Okay. Now I just gotta figure out what the road is it's down here. All right, that's us. Beach area. That's where we're going. Over here. All righty. Oh, the full moon looks awesome. Just peeking out between the clouds. You can hear the bullfrogs in the lake, too. I think that's actually a raccoon. I'm not sure what it is. Hey, dear! There's a couple of eyes looking at me. Alright guys, while I'm here, I'm going to answer your Facebook questions. Uh, first up, we have Scott. Uh, he asked, how do you decide where to go with so many trails? Uh, do I pick trails that will test your endurance or for the sceneries? For the most part, I'm just 
out there to get away from everybody, get away from life for a little bit, just kind of relax, do my own thing in the wilderness. So I don't really worry about the mileage. Um, sceneries are always a plus. They're not necessary for me, but I will definitely take some amazing vistas and uh, amazing views in my trip. So, um, also Reddit has a uh, great hiking community. Uh, it's a, like an online forum, and I usually get a lot of my ideas through that. So, hope that answers your question, Scott. Uh, next up, we have Ellie. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, the question is, does your girlfriend go hiking with you, and if so, does she enjoy it? Um, she goes, we go day hiking every once in a while. As far as, as far as, uh, the weekend backpacking, she's not really into that, and that's fine. That's kind of my thing. We kind of keep that thing separate, which is totally fine with me. Uh, we do go on day hikes. We go, you know, locally to Raccoon or North Park or, you know, some, somewhere around there, uh. Some, you know, somewhere locally. You know, we both enjoy the outdoors to an extent. Every once in a while, she'll go on one of my trips with me, just like an overnighter, and that'll be good enough for me. So we're actually going to be planning uh, probably the Dolly Sods, I'm thinking. Uh, I want to take her there because it was so beautiful the last time I went. I just want to go back uh, and do a quick overnight there. Uh, ben asked, have I considered coming out west, say, uh, Idaho or Montana, if the timing was right? Ben, I would love to do that. I'm not sure if the timing will ever be right for that, uh, but I do plan to go out west within the next two years. I'm going to try to shoot for two years. I'm going to try to tackle the John Muir Trail, uh, the JMT. Uh, it's a part of the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, look up the Journey of Light. It's an amazing documentary on YouTube, and I cannot wait to do that. It should be absolutely wonderful. Um, Debbie asks, she has two questions actually, one is what camera do I use? And she noticed how I quickly switched from myself to the trail back to myself. Um, the camera is a Nikon AW110. Uh, it's just a standard point and shoot camera and it does uh, you know, 1080p video, uh, you know, still images and it's shock proof, waterproof and freeze proof. So that's my go-to camera. Uh, this camera's been awesome. I'm probably looking to upgrade next year to something that does maybe time lapse or something, but for the past year and a half now, this camera's been absolutely amazing on all my trips. It's, it's gotten the crap beat out of it. I've dropped it. It's been in the rain. It's been weathered, and it's just holding up like crazy. It's very nice. Uh, and the second question is, do you clean your water bladder while you're out hiking, and or how do I maintain it during my hikes? Uh, as far as the water bladder goes, um, it's always filtered water, so the water always comes from the Sawyer Mini Filter, uh, which that takes care of probably 99% of the issues that you'll have with water bladders getting all slimy and gross. Um, I don't clean it out while I'm on the trail, um, but when I get home, if it's really bad, if it's really bad, I'll get a tablespoon of bleach and toss it into the water bladder, shake it around, and then you know, force the water through the bite valve, you know, just kind of via gravity. Um, after that, I'll put it on a coat hanger and I'll hang it out to dry for a couple weeks. And I believe Osprey and Platypus make uh, bleach cleaning tablets. So you just kind of put it in, shake it, mix it up with the water, and that'll clean your water for you. So guys, I hope that answers your questions. And I uh, thank you so much for the interaction. Uh, this is one thing that I really, really enjoy is interacting with the Facebook people and helping where I can. You guys are always willing to jump on me and help me, and I really appreciate the guy, that, guys. So we are going to head out from the lake, and we are going to go find the beach trail, whatever that may be. So I need to get out the map and take a look, but let's get back to it. All right, and the valley trail will be the last trail of the night. Let's see. There's beach. It's probably valley. Oh, that's a steep one. Wow. Holy cow. You can still hear the bullfrogs from down at the lake. So, 
Ah, so right now I'm smelling the smell of a lot of campfires. To my left, basically running parallel to the, um, the car campground area of Raccoon Creek State Park. So, you know, I've done it once. I've done the whole car camping thing. I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't know what to do with myself. I guess I'm more of a hiker than a camper. So, I don't know. I also... I also like to wake up really early and just get on the trail, but I like to get to camp early so I can kind of veg out. I mean, heck, I'm usually in bed by 9.30, 10 o'clock. I'm usually up by 5.30, 6 o'clock. So I'm not your typical camper. I'm more of like your typical old man camper, I guess. Believe me, I wish I could sleep in, but... I just feel like I'm wasting the day around if I'm not productive. I don't know why, but, you know, my friends put up with me. I don't know why, but I must be a pain in the butt to camp with. Because I'm always the one that wants to get up and go really early. I don't want to be waiting around for everybody. So, eh. I should learn how to relax, though. I'm just a uh, get up and go kind of guy, though. Hey there! Eh, no wind, but I heard some twigs breaking off. Probably about a mile and a half away from the car. Uh, it's, been probably, it's probably about 11 o'clock now. <sighs> oh, I just hit a big giant spider web. Oh, that's nasty. Oh well. All right, and we are basically out. Just got to walk this road down to the car. Um, the flashlight, the TN12. Awesome. <laughs> this is the first item I've received from a vendor that I can honestly say that there's no issues with. There's no need for a version 2. This is really, really nice. And I will definitely be keeping this thing around for everyday use. I even may put it as my... Uh, standard night hiking equipment because this thing was awesome we're still on the same battery from two and a half hours ago i think it's almost midnight right now and we started at 9 30. so they claimed that this only lasted about an hour and a half and you know at almost the second brightest setting but hey it's it's going strong as you can see so this is really neat i'm going to turn the light off because i'm getting to the road i don't want to confuse other drivers so guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me tonight on the Blue Moon, July 31st, 2015. This was an excellent trip for me, excellent test of the flashlight. Be looking for the review in the next couple days. It's always a pleasure filming this stuff for you guys, as you all know. If you have any questions about the trail, be sure to ask. If you have any questions about the gear, be sure to ask. Comment below or find me on Facebook via Outdoor Adventures. Thanks guys, have fun out there, and I'll see you on the trail.